With its high-stakes atmosphere and relentless pace, the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is a place where only the bravest and most skilled sailors are permitted to work. It's a place where danger lurks around every corner and the consequences of a single mistake can be catastrophic. Welcome to our latest episode, where we'll be exploring the exciting world of aircraft carriers. Join the club as we unravel high-end technologies on the planet by subscribing to this channel and hitting the notification bell so you won't miss any exciting videos in the future. So, why is it that most sailors in the Navy never get the chance to set foot on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier? Tune in to find out! Have you ever dreamed of exploring the inner workings of a modern aircraft carrier? These massive ships are known as cities at sea, housing and supporting up to thousands of people for extended periods of time. But don't let that fool you, it's not like any city you would find on land. There are certain areas that are restricted to most crew members, and one of the most coveted and off-limits areas is the flight deck. So why don't most Navy crew members get the chance to set foot on this hallowed ground? Wow! Can you imagine living on an aircraft carrier and not getting to see the outside world very often? It must be tough, but the views from the flight deck, hangar, and fantail must be absolutely breathtaking. And even though those areas offer amazing views, they can also be pretty dangerous places to work. It sounds like the upper levels of the island are a bit more secure, but due to the sensitive operations happening there and the lack of space, not many people can come and go. I can't even imagine going several days without seeing daylight. That would be tough. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is essentially a small airfield at sea, where planes take off and land. But it's also one of the most dangerous places to work, as the crew is at risk of numerous hazards, including being struck by propellers, ingesting engine intake, being injured by ordnance explosions or fuel fires, being cut by arrestor cables, or being hit by an aircraft that loses control. And all of this is happening while the flight deck is subjected to loud noises, heat, flame, toxic gases, and strong winds, rain, and swaying. It's no wonder that only a select group of people are allowed on the flight deck, as there have been fatal accidents that have occurred there. It's definitely not a place for the fate of heart. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier sounds like such a dangerous and intense place to work. I can't even imagine the kind of stress and danger that the crew members have to deal with on a daily basis. It's no wonder that only highly skilled and well-trained Navy personnel are allowed on the flight deck. And it sounds like the crew has to be prepared for all kinds of emergencies, as there have been some major accidents on the flight deck in the past. For example, in 1967 there was a fire on the USS Forstall that burned for hours and took the lives of 134 crew members. And in 2018, there was an incident where an arresting cable broke during an aircraft landing, causing eight sailors to sustain serious injuries. But fortunately, the pilot was able to prevent the plane from crashing into the water at the last minute. It's clear that the flight deck crew has to be prepared for anything, and it's good to know that they have simulations and drills to help them respond quickly in case of an emergency. Now, talk about a high-stakes job! On the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, there are different crew members with different roles, all working together to make sure that each aircraft landing and takeoff goes smoothly. These crew members can be identified by the different colors of shirts they wear, each corresponding to a specific task. For example, the crew members in yellow jerseys are known as aviation bosun's mates, and they are in charge of the overall operations on the flight deck. Their responsibilities include safely handling and maneuvering aircraft, protecting personnel during flight operations, and directing the movement of people on the deck. They are also responsible for ensuring the safety of all crew members on the flight deck, so they need to be familiar with the jobs of everyone else. If anyone on the flight deck needs help finding their way around, they can look for someone in a yellow shirt, as they are there to assist. 
It sounds like being an aviation bosun's mate is a challenging but important job. In addition to the aviation bosun's mates in yellow jerseys, there are also crew members on the flight deck who wear blue shirts. These crew members are typically newer recruits who have not yet completed all of the necessary qualifications for their positions. Their roles during flight operations may include chalking and chaining aircraft, operating elevators and tractors, and running elevators. Being a blue shirt is a demanding job, as these crew members work long hours and have to be ready to perform their duties at any time. They are often covered in grease and frequently have heavy objects in their hands, as they are responsible for much of the hands-on work on the flight deck. While they are in the blue shirt, they are also learning the ins and outs of effectively commanding aircraft, which will help them prepare for their eventual transition to a high-performance yellow shirt. To be able to carry out their tasks successfully, they need to pay close attention to the details and possess a significant amount of knowledge. It takes a lot of time and effort for a sailor to earn their yellow shirt, including completing training as a flight tech observer and learning how to direct and handle aircraft, as well as meeting the qualifications required of all sailors when they report to the Nimitz or any other aircraft carrier. To earn the right to wear a yellow jersey on the flight deck, sailors must complete a series of criteria that typically takes around 12 weeks. Sounds like becoming a yellow shirt on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier is no easy feat. This is followed by a written and oral examination given by the flight deck leading petty officer or assistant LPO, and any additional yellow shirt qualified chief petty officers or first class petty officers who choose to attend. But even after passing the examination and earning the right to wear a yellow jersey, the journey isn't over yet. Once sailors pass this examination and earn the right to wear a yellow jersey, they enter a period called under inspection, during which they are accompanied by an experienced mentor who closely observes their signals and decisions. The under inspection period is an apprenticeship that helps sailors become proficient in their new role on the flight deck, and its duration varies depending on the specific circumstances. The under-inspection process is in place to ensure that sailors have a thorough understanding of their duties on the flight deck, and it requires a lot of hard work. However, going through this process can also help sailors develop their character and knowledge of the flight deck, which are important qualities to have in this demanding and high-stakes environment. A safe transition of aircraft onto the catapults and away from the landing area is the goal of the operation which is to make you an excellent yellow shirt. Those wearing yellow shirts must use hand gestures to interact with the pilots and other crew members on the flight deck. You must show that you can safely take control of your aircraft and understand the pilot's instructions in order to be a member of the crew wearing a yellow shirt. A yellow shirt works under entirely different circumstances than any other position on the ship. The crew room, also referred to as the yellow shirt locker, is located on the Nimitz's flight deck. The close-knit group of people, both men and women, pass the time away from the oppressive heat by joking around and making plans for the ascent of expensive aircraft. In this region, where they have established a base of operations, the yellow shirts are preparing their minds to launch aircraft from their carrier. A career on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier proved to be difficult and inspired great bravery for its crew while being the most dangerous place to work. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous places in the Navy to work, and only individuals with extensive training are allowed to carry out their tasks there with little to no chance of injury. Are you ready to join the ranks of the brave U.S. Navy sailors wearing yellow shirts? It's not for the fate of heart the flight deck is one of the most dangerous working environments in the Navy. But for those who are up for the challenge, a career on the flight deck can be incredibly rewarding. You'll be part of a tight-knit team of highly trained professionals working together to launch multi-million dollar aircraft into the sky. So if you've got what it takes to handle the heat, literally it can get pretty sweltering out there and you're ready to embrace the risks and rewards of working on an aircraft carrier flight deck, count yourself in.